Hey, this is Adam with Wholesale Subject Supply. Today we're going to talk about float switches and go over a couple different uh, features of different float switches. So right here I have a wide angle float switch. This float will more than likely control a pump. And the reason is the difference between these two floats is actually pretty significant on the internals. So this float needs to come all the way up and then it turns on. Okay, so it's a wide, it's a wide angle and then it goes down and it turns off. We like mechanical floats much better than mercury floats for a couple different reasons. One of the reasons is a mechanical float is more deliberate in its action and when it turns on and off, uh, there's a lot of times there's turbulence in the water from a uh, pump blow off or a vacuum relief valve, something of that nature, water coming into the tank and you'll get movement in there and the, the float will move. On a mercury, what it does is it cycles the pump uh, over and over and over again and it's not good for the pump. On a mechanical action you just we just don't get that that problem from them so it's more deliberate. This float here what's important when you're looking for a float switch is a lot of people they just think well that floats cheaper than this float. What you need to look for is the amp rating on the float. So if you have a high head pump or a sump pump or something like that there's a good chance that pump is running at 10 amps. On a half horsepower pump, 10 amps is, seems to be the norm, 9.5 to 10.5. So if you buy a float switch and it's rated for 10 amps and the pump is pulling 10 amps, the float is not going to last that long. So that's why we always start off with a 13 amp on, on pumps. Uh, that gives you some room. You're only 70% you know, of the max power uh, load that it can take. And that's why we use a 13 amp float. There are floats out there that are, you know, they're cheaper, but they're only, they're only rated for eight amps or 10 amps. And you'll experience problems out of those floats. So it's the number one thing you wanna do is look for the amp rating on the float switch. I think there's a lot of confusion on that. And then people wonder, well, it only lasted six months. Well, that's partially, probably because the float switch that was bought with it is not rated for the same amperage as the pump is. So this float, for instance, <clears throat> is a narrow angle float, and I only have to go to here, and now the float is engaged. So it's not a wide angle. And this is used for alarms or uh, lift stations where you have a separate contactor that is taking the load of the pump, uh, and that's what this is. This is only rated for five amps. So this switch is a different mechanism than this one as well. So in here, there's two plastic uh, reads almost like a ping pong ball looks like and they 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 they're down at first and then when the ball hits them they they point up and there's a little switch in there and they hit the switch and they engage it so these are used for alarms so you'll have this float at the very top comes up water level gets to that point it sets off the alarm so you don't want it to go all the way to the top and this is more water before you know the alarm goes off and that's why these are used so these are also used in systems where in a, in, a, in a system where the voltage is high on a pump, this float will be used to send a signal to the relay, and that's the best way to explain it. Really, it's just the contacts are closing, it's sending electricity to the relay. The relay goes off and then a contactor closes. The contactor is then powering, juicing up the pump and running the pump. This doesn't take any electrical load from the panel to the pump, uh, you know, where it's running, you know, 20 amps. So that's where these are used and that's why these are called sensor floats or they're low amperage. There doesn't need, they don't need to be rated for a high amp. The reason that these are rated for a high amp is generally these are connected right to the pump and this is the barrier and what is causing the pump to come on and off. So when this closes, the contacts in this closed, electricity flows through the float switch down and energizes the pump and that's why you need a higher amp load rating on these floats. These floats, uh, the outer floats, they're ultrasonic welded, they're not glued. Uh, there's also, uh, right here, there's a bunch of resin that seals this part from water infiltrating it into. These have a five year warranty, they're 13 amp rated. Uh, we have some coming that are uh, 15 amp rated. And the only difference between those and these is actually the wire size. So the wire gauge is it's 14 gauge instead of 16 gauge on your 15 amp. Uh, float switches and that's where your difference comes in. So these are rated for a start amp of 85 So that's what we call a lock amp rotor So when the pump starts up it jolts real quick in amperage and then it drops down to its normals within probably 0.3 seconds It's pretty quick. You can catch it on a good meter Anyways, that's the overview on float switches 
Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure to ask them in the uh, comment section below. Like and subscribe to our page. We have a lot of good content that's coming up, uh, and we're here to help you and answer your questions uh, at Wholesale Subject Supply. Hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.